we go. Okay, we are all set. So it is already almost the first uh, week of August. It's almost over. And I wanted to touch base with you guys and give you a little bit of a heads up on what's going on. Dina, wow, family of 17 vacation and she's making the call. I'm impressed. Hi, girl. Um, so anyway, I wanted to go over a couple bits of recognition because I think it's important if I could even explain to you guys the momentum that this team has this summer compared to last summer, it is like night and day. And it really is because so many of you guys are um, using the momentum that we got from Summit um, and you are working smart in summer hours. I know summer is so much harder for most of us because the schedule is off, the kids are home, every day looks a little bit different, but you guys are leaning into your work, which is amazing. Um, I think Alicia's Success Club points also was such a great testament to the fact that but she said her goal out loud at Summit, which was to invite 500 people from that moment, which was only a month ago. So from June till the end of the year, her goal is to invite 500 people. Um, and that is a pretty lofty goal. And I also want to capitalize on the fact that when we say our goals out loud and we say them like they've already happened, it is powerful as to what can happen in terms of your momentum and your belief system. So I want to talk a little bit about those things tonight. We're not going to keep you any longer than 50 minutes. That will be the max that we go on this call, but there's some awesome information that I want to share. So before we get to that, I want to go ahead and um, just talk a little bit to some of these slides. So we post all the new coaches um, every single month and one of the things that I wanted to just let you guys know, I don't usually say it in the month of July because I don't want it to be an excuse, but July is definitely by far the hardest month of the year. Everybody is either planning a vacation or they're on a vacation because June and August are wacky depending on where you live in the country. Some people are going back to school this week. Some people still have a month of summer left. So July is wonky. That's why we usually do summit in July and it will be in July next year because Beachbody knows we need the momentum and we need the fuel to get us through a tough month. So the fact that we did so well for the month of July is a huge testament. And when we post these images, feel free to take this image, drag it to your hard drive, stick your logo on top of it if you want to. None of it ever hurts my feelings. Anything I post in Faithfully Fit Central is yours. If you don't have a logo yet, just use this. But this is a great opportunity for you to highlight your new coaches on your social media feed. And recognition and um, definitely um, highlighting people is one of the four vital behaviors. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, I wanna focus on recruiting because we can talk when we get to Alicia's section on invites about um, the way that we're inviting people either to the business opportunity or to our challenge groups. But inviting, again, is one of the four vital behaviors. And so I just wanted to highlight Heidi and, and Pam both who came in at five coaches um, for the month of July. Such an awesome accomplishment. Um, Heidi's day job had her in the most strenuous and most stressful month of her year. She had to present in front of um, three to 500 people, an entire business plan that she worked on for months. And while she was traveling to do that, she was still able to recruit that many coaches. Um, and Pam, most of the year is toggling a job um, as a teacher. So the fact that she was able to finish school and then get enough momentum to become um, one of the top two recruiters of the month is just awesome. So when we have the diamond FAQs, and for those of you that are somewhat new, you might not know about these but once a week one diamond coach comes on either live or on a zoom page or sometimes both and it's just an open forum to ask questions and so these calls are important for when you see the recognition if I were a brand new coach I would definitely be asking these two what do they do to recruit how do they invite how do they attract people to them those would be three main questions that I would want to know on a coach FAQ so definitely make sure that you guys are taking advantage of those when you can if you can't make a coaching FAQ and it's a coach that you really feel connected to or you want to hear what's making them successful send them a note ahead of time or send them a question or Facebook message or box and they will answer it and then post the recording for you 
Um, I want to definitely highlight um, some rank advancements that we've had. Irene has a new personally sponsored coach by the name of Robert. He hit Emerald in one day. He signed up three coaches in one day. So reach out to him to find out what his um, secrets have been. And then Gail is on Pam's team, and Gail is on fire. I think she's added, um, I want to say, five coaches so far. So she's also just hitting the ground and being fearless in the way that she invites people. Um, Diane and Jamie are two brand new coaches, uh, brand new being within the last three months, um, who sold their first challenge packs. So I always say to brand new coaches, don't compare yourself to others because your chapter one might be someone else's chapter seven or chapter 20. Some people sell challenge packs or become Emerald coaches or sign three people up in one day. Other people, it takes longer. It just depends on your following. It depends on your friends. It depends on how you're marketing. So. Stay focused on your own journey. Um, and these two women, Jamie's been a coach for just a couple of weeks. Diane's been working at it for three months, but both of them have been working hard, digging heels in, and really doing a good job with their vitals, and it's showing off with the way that they're able to start impacting other people. Diane is also in the UK, which is pretty exciting because she officially has brought on our second UK coach on our team. Um, it's actually not official yet because the leadership ladder is not um, official until next week. But I was able to have a call with Jeff Matheson, who's my Team Beachbody corporate contact today. I do a one on one with him every couple of weeks. And he confirmed that Juliet. Her team is a team leader team, and I highlighted that not too long ago on the leadership ladder um, in our Faithfully Fit Central page, which is awesome. Not only do you have to have certain thresholds for Success Club and for the commission and for the volume that you are bringing in as a team, but four of Juliet's personally sponsored coaches have hit Success Club. So the fact that that business is duplicating and that she has four women or men, because I think Dan is one of them, on her team that is bringing in success club points and changing lives is awesome. And that right there is showing that she's really building roots in her business. So she joins Heidi as one of two team leads um, on our team, which is an awesome accomplishment. Okay, I'm gonna move along to uh, the Diamond Retreat, um, or I'm sorry, the Leadership Retreat. Um, I wanna highlight this because um, we've talked a little bit about it, but for many of you guys, this is a huge goal. I started these, this will be our third one coming up in January 2019. Um, I rented a house in Florida. It sleeps 24 people. It's got eight bedrooms. It's pretty Mac Daddy. It's pretty sweet. It's right on the ocean. Um, it's right in between like Stewart and Jupiter, very close to West Palm Beach. Um, this is an event where it is a true business event. On Thursday night, Star Diamond coaches are going to fly in and we are going to meet on Friday with two life coaches that really focus on who you are as an individual and how your gifts can be used to impact other people. And when it's said and done, that's really what coaching is all about is how we are able to impact others and change their lives. So there is criteria that I posted in the Faithfully Fit Central page. Um, if that's something that you want to do, even if you're an Emerald coach right now and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I would be a Star Diamond coach. The first thing is this, you say out loud every single day, I am a two Star Diamond coach. I am a one star diamond coach, whatever it is. And you treat your business like you are already a one or two star diamond coach. Um, you've got to hit success club every single month and you've got to hit the rank, right? The rank goal. So if you don't know how to do that, get a game plan with your personally sponsored coach on how to do that. And when July ended and July being the toughest month of the year, and I didn't say that out loud to many of you. So many of you are hearing this for the very first time. I was having my quiet time. You guys know Faithfully Fit was born out of prayer. So for me, that's part of my core value. And it's one of the reasons why I named this team Faithfully Fit. And in my quiet time, I literally was like, okay, you know what? It's not really always up to me to decide who comes to these retreats or not. How can I gift people who did not hit Success Club in the month of July an opportunity to earn Success Club or to get a freebie for that month and still qualify for the leadership retreat? And that's where we came into this idea of this August social media challenge. So there are four prizes that you can win by participating in this challenge. All you need to do is follow the schedule and on August 14th, you need to highlight a customer. On August 28th, you've got to 
cross promote on your social media channels, which you do anyway. On August 21st, um, you've got to throw in a video or some sort of link that your audience is going to enjoy. On the 18th, you've got to create a video. So maybe it's the first time you go live or maybe you go live about something different. All you need to do is follow the social media challenge. And if you do that, you can pick one of four prizes. And one of those four prizes is an opportunity to get a hall pass for the month of July so that that doesn't count against you and eliminate you from the opportunity to be at the leadership retreat. So Star Diamonds come into that leadership retreat on Thursday night. Diamonds fly in Friday afternoon. And all you need to be a diamond coach is 12 coaches. That's it. And they don't have to be selling coaches. They can be customers. They can be people that just want to drink Shakeology. It can be your husband. It can be your spouse. It can be your girlfriend. It can be your mom, your sister, your neighbor, whatever. Talk to your personally sponsored coach. And if you don't believe you can do it, borrow the belief from them. We've all had to borrow belief so many times before. And sometimes that's what you need to do in order to get yourself started. So I won't go through the rest of the prizes because I want to make sure we've got plenty of time for good content. Um, but you can go back and look at that post or ask your personally sponsored coach later. Um, the Faithfully Fit August activity is up. Starting tomorrow, we are going to be able to uh, start talking about the pre-sale for the 2B Mindset certification. So if you're somebody that has had great success with 2B Mindset, maybe you've been doing 2B Mindset, maybe you love 2B Mindset and still want to have success with the program, you can begin that certification um, pre-sale and then you um, will start to get that training from Alana in September. I have requested again from corporate to get a team call with Alana. Jeff Matheson was like, what do you need from me? I'm like, I still want that team call with Alana, which I think would be awesome for her to come and talk to us about the benefits of being 2B Mindset certified. Um, I was in the test group, Pam was in the test group. This is taking it even another level of what the test group was, and it really will enable you to talk nutrition with your challengers and with your coaches, um, and give you an opportunity to talk to other people about it. I've been asking this one woman to coach. She's got a conflict because she works at another fitness center, so now guess what my angle is? I want to talk to her about becoming a coach to be 2B Mindset certified, and that's all she does at her gym is talk 2B Mindset. So it's a another avenue for you to provide a solution to people who have a problem. So this is the banner in the Faithfully Fit Central page. If you want to peek at it, you can go in there later. Last thing before, two more things before I get to the good stuff. So syncing, this is awesome, you guys. If you don't know about this now, you can sync Beachbody on-demand workouts or your nutrition plus that you've been using for 2B Mindset with your challenge tracker. So it worked perfectly for me today. I put my weight in my nutrition app and I did Beachbody On Demand and both of them synced into the challenge group tracker and showed that I had a weight in and showed that I had a workout done, which was amazing. So I didn't have to do all this clicking in three different places. So come and look at this slide. This slide will be posted in the Faithfully Fit Central page. I did an entire post in our challenge group about this today, which was so valuable. So many people were messaging me about, wow, I never knew that this capability was there. And it integrates them deeper into um, what we do and how they can track their progress. So definitely something that you want to be able to share in your challenge groups or in your holding tanks, so to speak. Okay. We have a lot of traffic in Faithfully Fit Central, a lot of brand new coaches, a lot of people posting stuff, which is incredible. We love it. We love the growth. Please do me a favor, and if you have your own team, please share this with your team. When you are posting in Faithfully Fit Central, please tag your coach because too many posts are getting a little bit buried in Faithfully Fit Central, um, and if you want an answer, you will need to tag your coach. What that also does is it actually will make you think, is there another place I can get this answer before I post it in Faithfully Fit Central? We all wanna be able to answer questions, but I think every single one of us on here know that we're all busy. So Faithfully Fit Central is a place where you're like, you know what, I'm tagging my coach. I've looked in FAQs for this. I can't find it. Can somebody help me? And when your coach is tagged, you're definitely going to be able to get a response because your coach is tagged. So instead of just throwing stuff in Faithfully Fit Central, just tag your coach so that we're able to have some dialogue on every single post and everybody gets heard. 
Okay, um, we definitely had some awesome Success Club rock stars. These are Dina's rock stars. Dina has always done such an amazing job recognizing her challengers when they finish challenge groups. She did a post recognizing her team of rock stars who all hit Success Club. So super pumped for that team. Talk about momentum and being on fuego. So Megan and Linda and Jessica, that is phenomenal. Awesome job. And let's all take suit and follow the way that Dina celebrates people. It's so important. And it's one of the reasons that her team has so much energy and they always have so much fun. Um, okay, so Success Club was incredible. Dina is always up there. Um, Alicia is always up there. But I think it's safe to say that Alicia absolutely crushed it for the month of July. And as I speak right now, I know the last time I looked this morning, she was already at Success Club 4. It wouldn't surprise me if she's already hit Success Club on the 6th of the month. So it is no surprise that we are going to turn it over to Alicia so that she is able to talk to us a little bit about um, inviting and what her strategy are so get ready to take some notes um, get ready to have your questions answered we'll have a little bit of time for FAQ in a little bit but Alicia's got the floor for the next 20 minutes it's all you girl okay um, hi everybody so Tracy am, am I gonna see my face or I'm not gonna oh there I am could I still see the slides though and you is can't that really possible see your face and slide at the same time I don't need my face slide okay. is good Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I know what I look like. Um, okay. okay. So one of the things I wanted to just update the team on, cause I think half of you guys know this and half of you don't, and I don't want to go into all the detail, but, um, although I'm celebrating my two year anniversary coaching this month, um, I have had a really interesting journey for the first almost year. I was doing what all of you are likely doing, posting and loving being a new coach and struggling through some of the learning, you know, that comes along with that. Um, and then was asked by my company to basically shut it all down and, um, obviously didn't want to create a bunch of, um, friction. So I ended up obliging with like the public view, but I certainly, um, kept up conversations with people. And so when I think about the shift that I've made, because I left that job officially in May, um, but it was in April that I started kind of reposting again, um, my entire approach shifted, which you can imagine. I went from more of a private, um, coaching life to a very public coaching life. I had to operate in these weird pockets of time. I really didn't have office hours because coaching always came second, um, to my demanding job plus the household and keeping up with everything while my husband traveled a lot. So that has been new. And then I've also been really reactive. Um, I had a goal to hit success club 10 and I would scrape and claw and make it happen, but it was very reactive. I wasn't ever being proactive. And so I think that those three things are notable about the shift that I made in terms of the hours that I was spending. Um, it went from five ish or so. Um, and it's probably only about, I would say maybe 10 to 15. I really would like it to be 20 to 25. Um, I'm just not there yet. I'm hoping the school year brings a little bit of normalcy, but, um, leaving a job, we bought and sold a house, um, and dealing with that summer schedule that Tracy talked about. Um, I'm hoping that in September I'll be able to be, um, more rooted in what I'm going to talk about, but it is certainly still something I'm working on. Um, so one of the things that I had to do was separate my beach body hours. And so in my calendar, I actually stopped just saying beach body in general or um, office hours. I separated into product of the product, which is like taking care of me first, making sure that I am doing those vital behaviors as it relates to me. My personal development um, comes throughout the day. So I'll talk about that in a second, but my workout and my shake that has to be done in that early morning time. I am a regular on the morning miracle zoom calls in the morning. I think they've been awesome. Um, and what I'll do is I'll get up and I'll usually have about 30, 45 minutes before I push play on my workout. And that's when I'm going through my plan for the day. I'm following up on some, um, emails and messages from the night before I'm commenting on some posts and then I'm getting ready for my own personal workout. But if you look, when I put this time in my calendar and by the way, the blue is all beach body. Um, so in case you're looking, that's kind of how I figured this out. 
Um, and I put in the notes section what I want to do during those office hours. And then in the afternoon, what's worked for me is a 12 to 2-ish is my goal. Uh, second set of office hours, which is more of those business building activities that are going to lead to success club, building a team, and hitting um, some of the big lofty goals that I have said out loud. Um, and so that's what that second image shows you. I think you can all see it, hopefully. Um, what I do when. So this is interesting. So I tried to separate because I still very much work in pockets. Like I'm in, I picked the wrong line at a grocery store and I'm going to go insane. And I have like six minutes while, you know, they're doing a price check on something. Like I will go in and I'll start conversation or I will see if that person, um, you know, checked out on the link that I sent. So as I look at the pockets of time, I think all of us probably still have some of those. So I want to talk about each category. I already talked about products of the product, working out, have my shake, um, social media, anything around like my own footage. So I will record most of my workout. Um, Lift four has been cool because I'll, I'll, I'll record, you know, each set or a super set. Um, and then I will use other apps, whether it's slow, fast or, hype type or others to um, kind of doctor them up for Instagram. That's the time that I do that. Office hours, as I mentioned, I do targeted invites to specific people. Um, I will update. I actually have an iPad that I use, but I paid for Microsoft Excel. It's just what I'm comfortable with. I like it better than sheets um, for me. And so I have a master list and I have a screenshot somewhere of that, which I'll show you and I can share with you. But that is where I'm going back through Instagram and um, uh, Facebook Messenger and email because I'm having these conversations all over the place. I'm going back and updating the Excel list because a lot of um, what I pay attention to is the date that I last talked to that person. I don't know if you guys have felt this, but I'll be like, oh, I just, I just spoke with Sarah and I look back and it was in March. I'm like, how did how has it been six months since I spoke with her? So really having a central repository um, has been helpful. Um, I'll also spend the time crafting posts. Um, so um, I try to pre-plan my post for at least the week ahead. Um, and so during office hours, I will do that. And then um, in the pockets of time, that's when I do my challenge group check-in. Um, when I know that I have a couple minutes and I don't have to really like think in terms of creating fresh content. It's more just responding to the content. Um, national wake up call and PD. I very much do these on the go. I actually think that I'm going to start switching to a more focused time for my national wake up call because I don't take notes. I listen to it while I'm driving. I listen to it uh, while I'm drying my hair in the morning. Um, you know, little quick rides to and from picking up the kids from camp. Um, that's when I consume that stuff. I think I could be doing a better job, but for now that's where it goes. And then comments and conversations, um, which I'll talk a little bit about soon on the bottom where it says brain dump. Um, I think a lot of us have ideas. Oh, that'd be a good post. Or I should think of that person or, you know, maybe I'll follow up with so-and-so I always, no matter when I'm working, will jot those down in a note section on my phone just so I don't forget them because those are fleeting and it could be I saw another coach do something great or um, you know a, a challenger in a group had a comment. I'm like, you know what? Other people probably feel that way. So that happens all the time, but the rest I try to keep separate. Um, okay, and so how I do it. Um, so this is, and I, I kind of alluded to this in the post um, when Tracy had talked about having me speak. Um, all of us are going to have our own flair. And so however you do it, it's probably going to be pretty good. Um, and it's going to probably be different than mine. And mine sounds different than Tracy's. It's just a matter of doing it. However, I have noticed a difference in my methods. Um, and it's been as much voice as possible. I think we spend a lot of time trying to craft these very... Um, you know, direct, but not too salesy. And oh my gosh, do I put like an exclamation point? It's like, I think we overthink how we craft these responses. And I believe that using Facebook voice messages, which if you don't know how to do it, I can show you offline sometime, but there is a, a little microphone. You only have one minute, which is actually helpful. 
um, I think, because you keep it short, sweet, to the, to the point. They can hear you being a person and they can hear your tone. And one of the things I'm going to talk about in a future slide is um, different kind of sales tactics or so to speak strategies that I've used pre beach body and indifference is one of them. Um, you cannot come across as desperate. I don't care if you're at success club zero or 30, you have to act like that person like does not make a difference if they say yes or no. And I think it's hard sometimes to do that in a written format. Um, so I like them to hear my voice, which could be something as simple as, Hey, listen, if it works for you, great. If not, no sweat, just didn't want you to think I forgot about you. Hope everything's going great on vacation or whatever it is. Right. So you want to keep it very casual, but don't get me wrong. I want every single person to buy a challenge pack that I talk to. So you can still want that, but I don't want them to think that it is like, you know, whether I eat or not is dependent on their, their saying yes, because that doesn't feel good. Um, one of the things that um, I've been doing a lot more too is that when I ask somebody uh, and I invite them to something, challenge group, coaching, something, and they say no, and then I'm following up with them again, I'm always making sure that the next follow-up has nothing to do with Beachbody. I'm finding a reason to talk to them that has not related to a sale, a shake, a workout, anything, because I think they're surprised by that. I think they're probably like, oh, she's probably asking me again about Beachbody. And I'm like, where did you get that cute dress? Or I saw the post about your son, hope he's feeling better. Like, it has to be authentic. And I say this all the time. You can be intentional, but you still can be authentic. If you're inauthentic, that feels icky and gross to you and to the person on the receiving end. So I always make sure that I am um, reaching out to them about something non-Beachbody related. Um, I will comment on this real quick. Somebody um, that was on like my target customer list posted something about like all these MLM people and how they should just get off of um, Facebook and don't say like, hey, insert name here. They're like, we feel it. It's phony. It's fake. And then someone commented, who's also on my target list, no, I don't want your effing beach body or Rodan and Fields or enlisted all this stuff. And that bothered me. And I was like, in my head wanted to respond, but I didn't. But I did pay attention to the fact that whoever has been contacting them has made them feel this way. Um, so just think about if it feels phony to them or even to you, it's not gonna end well. So either wait for a reason to like authentically reach out to them or just move on for the time being. So um, that's something that I've been doing um, iPhone, I don't think Android has the same capabilities, but I've been also doing, instead of texting people, I've been doing the voice message over text. Another way to add the human element, um, obviously we use Voxer. The same way that we feel like we're connected with people, that's what our potential uh, clients or customers can do as well. And then I asked them, like I had um, a woman comment on someone else's post. She is in a whole different demographic than me. Um, she's on Facebook, but I asked her, Hey, would you prefer a phone call? Or would you prefer text? And she was like, I'd like to hop on the phone. A lot of people prefer text, but I always ask what they would want to do. And then I make sure I know what I'm walking into. And I send a list of questions that I want them to respond to before we hop on the phone around what they eat around, um, you know, uh, how they're feeling about their overall health, what their goals are. Um, have they ever heard of Beachbody? Have they ever had a shake before? And I ask them to send all this information to me so I can prepare for that call. So I'm not blindsided by something. So I know or I can anticipate what the objections are going to be and then have a response ready for them. So um, I've talked about that on separate Q&As um, and I have something that I am working on that I will post in the file section for uh, Faithfully Fit. But for now, just make sure that you're not going into that call blind. Um, if you go to the next slide, Trace, um, here are the four, the, these have always been top of mind. And I think a lot of you are doing this without even knowing that you're doing this and how you post and um, your follow-up. But uh, this acronym FIGS was always something that I paid attention to, which stood for fear of loss, indifference, greed, and sense of urgency, right? So you want to establish one, two, three, or ideally all four of these when you are talking to somebody about something, about coaching, 
about joining a freemium, about joining a challenge group or buying something from you. Um, fear of loss. That's what it sounds like. You don't want to miss out, right? The first five people. So you'll hear that language sometimes in our, in our posts. Um, indifference. Again, I talked about this. Hey, if it works for you, great. If not, no big deal. I also like taking it away from them. Like there was a girl that I was talking to about a challenge pack. She was like, I don't know. Like I'm moving. I'm like, you know what? I don't think this is a good time for you. Why don't you settle and I'll work with other people. And then you let me know when a better time is. And she was like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Like next month, even crazier. Maybe I can do it this month. And now she's asking me, right. And the tables have turned a little bit. So, um, it's a hard thing to do again, because you want the sale. Um, but if you can take it away from them and tell them, no, you'll know that you're in a, a good position around indifference, greed, um, similar to fear of loss, right? Everyone else is doing it. Um, so-and-so is a new mom that just grabbed a spot. She's actually in a really similar boat. Here's how she's approaching it, or here's why she's doing it. Um, and then sense of urgency, right? I need to know by a certain date, July, um, special is ending soon, getting them to move a little quicker. Okay. So this image didn't come across, unfortunately, the way that I wanted, but I have this big master list that I've been working on. And on the bottom, I have all these different tabs and you can do this in Google sheets, but this is Excel, excuse me. And I have my current challenge group, past customers, target customers, which is basically like everybody that I think could ever be in anything. Right. And I'm using Facebook to go through each person in either defriend, invite to something, um, memory jogger, freemium is another tab that I have. And then on the top, I have um, the date I last talked to that person, their next shipment date. Did I invite them to coaching, which, which is helping me with this big goal? Um, and then what you don't see over on the right is, have I asked them for a referral? Referrals were really important to me when I could not utilize social media. And people were, were more than willing to offer names to me. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone resulted in a challenge pack, but I'm like, hey, listen, like, obviously you're killing it. Who do you know that has commented on your transformation that you think could also be a really good challenger? Like, I'd love to talk with them and I could give you a little referral goodie too, which is like sometimes a couple beach bars or 10 bucks or shakes. But again, now I'm getting a new customer. So to me, the short-term referral bonus um, is always worth it. Okay. So one of the things I did was look at my July success club points to see where they came from, because, um, this was my best month that I've had. Um, my goal was to beat my best. And, um, when I knew that I had some momentum, I upped the goal a little bit more, but I didn't hit that second goal. But when I looked at where they came from, one was a referral. Um, and these are the people Two were people that I talked to this month. And I want that to be really important because as Tracy said, right, July is a slow month. Two were people that were in freemiums, by the way, that I converted into challenge packs. They were, um, and it wasn't even an official freemium. I said, hey, I'm doing a three-day cleanse. Who wants to follow me behind the scenes? And I added them to my virtual community. I did everything in there. And I said, hey, how was it? Have you ever done a cleanse before? And they're like, yeah, I really need to drop some weight. I'm like, listen, a cleanse isn't going to be the best solution for you because three days later, you're going to gain it all back. Let's talk about your goals a little bit. And both of them bought challenge packs as a result. So yes, I did talk to two fresh people and sold them, but the majority were not, uh, not that case. Three were people that I invited directly to coach that were either past customers or have never been a Beachbody customer, some of which are on this call right now. Um, five were past customers. This is something I think that we do not pay attention to enough. Um, these are people, again, I've been coaching for two years. I don't know that everyone's got the same length uh, from a track record standpoint, but these are people that they had DVDs, they've never had on demand, or they let their Shakeology lapse. Um, they thought they could get by without it or some substitute. And they're like, you know what? I would love to get back into Shakeology, right? So um, five people this month, so 10 success club points came from past challengers. Um, and then seven were follow-ups. So 14 success club points were people that I had been talking to, some of as far back as January of, of, of this year, that have said no to me multiple times. And so I don't want that to go unnoticed because I would almost have half the points 
um, if I did not follow up with those people. Um, and if you look at uh, 24 of my 36 success club points were from follow-ups. So I want to make sure that that is sticking out. Um, the other thing that I, I have been doing since I started coaching kind of full time now is I'm always thinking about and almost calling my shot on who the next success club points are going to come from. As I end my month, I'm like, okay, who said no to me? Who has a link that never did anything with it? Who says they were going on vacation and it's a weird time, but maybe call me back in August. These are the people. So I've identified 24 success club points. If all of these people said yes, I'd be at success club 24, right? I have a link out to two of them. Um, I have conversations set up with some of them when they get back from their vacation. And then I'm also thinking about, okay, those 36 success club points, who's loving Shakeology? Who could be a great discount coach? Who could actually be a great selling coach and sharing coach? And these are the four people, Natalie, Jill, Jen, and Adrian. Uh, Jen just signed up as a discount coach. And my hope is that the other three by the end of the month will also be coaches on the team. So for anyone that fell short of their goal in July, it should now be great. Here are my people for August. This is my, this is my warmest market. Um, and so that has been helpful too, is like feeling better coming into the month that I have some momentum from last month, whether you hit your goal or not. And then, um, yeah. I said I would invite 500 people. Um, that number, like literally, I think it came out of the margarita that I was drinking. Like that's a, that's a ridiculous amount considering I never invited people to coaching before. Um, I have only invited 64. Um, I had to reverse engineer that goal, right? So 500, seven months to do it. That's 72 people every month. I've invited 64. So August needs to be recommitting to inviting. Um, as does September and the rest of the year, because we got, we got some ground to make up. But again, you've heard me talk about the fact that um, I'm looking for no's. When I, um, if I invite 500 people and 480 tell me no, that means I got 20 coaches between now and the end of the year. That's a lot. I mean, that is like, that will revolutionize my business. That'll allow me to advance the way that I want to. It'll allow me to help support the new people that I'm bringing on. So um, I just like th threw a lot out there. Um, I hope that someone took something from it. Um, and I don't know timing wise, Trace, how I did, but if we want to ask any questions, you guys can reach me offline. If there's anything short term I could hit on, I'll follow your lead, Trace. Yeah, I think we have time for a couple of questions, two or three maybe, if there are any. Tanya's got a post-it on her head, so I'm going to start with her. <laughs> A post-it. You're muted, Tanya. Oh, there I just we go. unmuted you. So, so first of all, I mean, I just want to go through this entire deck and slowly process the knowledge you just dropped on me. <laughs> um, it is a lot of content, but I honestly see just, and maybe it's because I saw you when we were training to, from Emerald to Diamond. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I swear I'm not going to cry right now, but just to hear you say what you said, how you just said it. Wow. Wow. Sister. Thanks, Tanya. I Seriously. appreciate that. No, 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 no. It's a lot. And I think it's, it's really that. I think that what I'm taking away, it, it is the fact that we, we have to remember how we're good at what we do. And, and if it is an email, do the email. If it is a text, then do that. Remember how you know someone. Remember that commonalities that you have with that person. We know better. We, we know how to reach out to people. We just probably just sometimes get caught up with, okay, it's a task. Let's just knock this out. You're making it, you're taking that extra step to remember how. And I think it's a lot to do with you probably shifting um, your priorities and your time to really go through your business, to your pipeline and seeing what's possible. And that's just it. I mean, you went through basics of sales right there, relationship building. I'm good in person. I'm, I really suck by email. So. so don't do email. Right. So just don't ever send an email. It should all be over the phone, over a Zoom call, over a cup of coffee if they're local. Mm -hmm. um, the human element, 
especially if we have these big numbers that we want to hit. Like if that gets lost, I'll never hit. I may ask 500 people, but 499 will say no because they're feeling like a number. And that's, that's what we have to remember. So it's good to see you on here, girlfriend. I know. I'm happy to sure. see you on this call. So I just want to throw this out there. I, I love doing team calls after I talk to Jeff Matheson. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a, um, the Northeast regional guy for, um, three to eight star diamond coaches. And I ask him all the time, Jeff, you talk to star diamond coaches in the Northeast all the time. What is the number one reason why coaches stay with this business because it's not always a glory happy day or a season in coaching. And what do you guys think the answer is? It's not money. I'll tell you that. And there are star diamond coaches making $500,000 a year and it's not the money. Right. I think it's is it this, our support, support? It's the community. It's the community. And so if you think about it, even if community isn't the reason why you joined, you got to remember that community is what most people are looking for. So when Alicia talks about using her voice or Tanya talks about going and seeing people one-on-one, -on -one, it's that connection that people are longing for, right? So just remember that. And, and, and if you have not gone through Faithfully Fit Academy, there's a whole section in there on how to lead voice messages. Um, there's also a whole section in there. Alicia showed her tracking sheet which i think is important i just actually made three new videos that i added to faithfully fit academy i'm trying to keep it updated and current i added three new videos on what my tracking sheet looks like and i actually updated my tracking sheet after i saw heidi's tracking sheet because heidi does a really good job teaching her team okay we need a list first and foremost and then we need a way to track who we're following up with and it just hit home when alicia talked about 24 of her success club points came from follow-ups if you don't have a very good method and i know it's non-sexy stuff to be like where's my list how do i track it's boring stuff but it's basics that you've got to get good at or those people are not ever followed up with, and I promise they're going to find another coach. So it's got to be you. So go back into Faithfully Fit Academy or go to my YouTube channel. It's all there, but I did a whole Zoom on it, and it's exactly what Alicia is talking about, and just find a way that works for you. Maybe it's streak, maybe it's um, you know pen and paper, but just do whatever floats your boat and it's going to make you successful. All right, what else do we have for Alicia? Maybe one more question. No, but okay. Yeah, she said to ask for referrals if she had somebody that she approached. Well, what if that someone she approached is the customer? Do you still ask for referrals and take it away from that customer? So meaning if you're talking to somebody and asking them for a referral? No, you just said that when you had mentioned something about when you started talking to people, you would always ask for referrals. I, oh, I, I'm sorry. So, sorry. So I ask them directly. And if they say no, depending on why they said no, I will sometimes say, okay, well, I have two spots left. Is there anybody you know that okay. might, you know, not have the same access to a gym that you do or might not have, again, whatever their reason for no was, I say, like, again, when people say, oh, like, it's working for me, like, great. I'm like, oh, awesome. Is there anybody that you know that maybe doesn't have the same setup that you do or may, you know, may need some accountability and structure or does have an extra 10 pounds that they want to work off before the summer's over? Um, but the referral that I got or the referrals that I um, have most success on is an existing challenger. And then it also leads well into talking about coaching because if yeah. they're like, oh, I have this person, I have this person. I'm like, oh, great. Well, thank you for sending them to me. But do you know that you're, you can enroll them and get commission and pay for your shakes? Do you want to talk about that? So that's an option too. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say, one. go ahead. No, I think that's the one I really, really like. I like the one that, that the, it's a hustle line and I think you have to do it at the right time. When you ask for a referral to someone um, you actually said, hey, from the folks that supported you, that, that just changed because she's, she's also proud to tell you who supported her. She probably has an inside you know, information on who 
may respond to to your call and and I think it's just a hustle because you're doing it at you know at a, at a very specific time so I, I really like that one and I think I want to use that one yeah. Awesome. yeah I mean I feel like I need to rewatch this call and look at our slides over again so I will definitely be posting the recording so you guys can go back and look at her slides for sure um, the one thing that I think is one of the biggest takeaways of all of this and it was the theme of summit is that um, Alicia talked about like not acting desperate. And I think about myself when I first started coaching and I don't know if you could find a more desperate coach. I was definitely like begging in my voice, not necessarily with my words, but my tone, my demeanor. And that's why it was sort of a pinnacle moment, I think, for the diamond coaches who did the diamond lunch at Summit. And we all said out loud what our goals are. And we had to go around the table and we had to say them like they'd already happened. And then we had to write them down. And then I sent them all these amazing monthly planners that Alicia's brother actually has designed. They're fantastic. Talk to her offline if you want one. I live by it. But then we had to write what our goals were down in these books that like they'd already happened. And then I'm talking to Jeff Matheson today and he's like, okay, what's going on, Tracy? I'm like, well, I'm a 10 star diamond coach and I have got momentum on my team. And do I, do I like right now believe that we can be a 10 star team? Not a hundred percent at all. And guess who I'm borrowing belief from those of you that think this team is ready for it. And Jeff, who's like, absolutely. And next year it's 15. So trust me when I say like, Hey, borrow belief from your coach. I need to borrow belief sometimes too. But when I say I'm a 10 star diamond coach and when I act that way, my calls run better, my challenge groups run better, my one-on-ones with coaches run better because I mentally am a 10 star diamond coach. Doesn't matter what my back office says. Right now it says I'm a five star. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I said that I was a two star diamond coach when I went from like diamond to emerald for a month. So like you guys, it's okay if your rank goes up and down. Everybody is shaky and unstable. The main thing is, is that you act like you want to be. If you wanna be a emerald coach with a lot of volume underneath you, there are emerald coaches making $50,000 a year, you guys. So just, Figure out what your goal is, figure out why you want that to be your goal, why you want to hustle for it, and say it out loud every single day and believe it. And when you do that, you will not sound desperate, you will not sound salesy, you will be totally genuine, um, and you will see that impact and that momentum change in your business. So that's your assignment for when you hang up is to hang up this call and say, I am a whatever type of coach you want to be. So Alicia, thank you so much. You did such an awesome job. I can't wait for this to be recorded. I'm just rushing through this because I promised you guys it would be a 50 minute call and I'm right at that moment. So I'm really proud of myself because I am working on punctuality because I am an on time coach too. So I love you guys. I hope you, does anybody want a picture for social media? Okay. You got 30 seconds. Everyone do your best smile. I already have my picture. So you want one, Alicia? Okay. We good? We good? Everyone did their best pose or best smile? Okay. I love you guys. This will be posted pretty soon. Bye.